Now, about two weeks ago, I was talking about the new Apple Watch feature that is going to add an ECG to that product so that you can get notified if you're having uh, AFib or other types of arrhythmias. And uh, Joanne here wrote in to say that this is going to be a US only feature initially. Uh, it looks like Joanne is from Australia and it doesn't look like Australia's regulators have approved this feature yet. And this is going to be the one thing that will certainly slow down uh, the rollout of this feature over time because they have to, first of all, appease US regulators before they release the software. In fact, the watch launched without that feature enabled. Uh, but they also have to do the same thing in every single country they want to offer this feature in. And that's going to require uh, dealing with medical regulators in each of those places because this is a device giving some kind of medical advice and regulators will want to make sure that it's not putting your health at risk uh, in the process of doing that. So there's certainly going to be, I think, a lot of time here before every country gets this feature. But it looks like to some degree the FDA uh, kind of fast-tracked this. In fact, there was some discussion about the fact that uh, Apple announced this feature and the FDA clearance of it happened within the same day or two, and there was some discussion about that. Uh, the FDA released a pretty lengthy statement uh, the same day this erupted to try to uh, give people more information as to what went on behind that. And they have a, a new process that they've developed inside the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for clearing these kinds of devices. They can't go out and say that this is an FDA approved device for this, but they can say that the FDA cleared it. They looked at it, they made sure that it wasn't posing any real risks and provides a greater benefit than those risks. And given what they saw here, apparently they are okay with that. And this is their statement about this new procedure. They believe that regulating novel, swiftly evolving products must foster and not inhibit innovation. And so they're working to uh, come up with flexible and risk-based approaches to regulation, uh, which they hope will reduce the time and cost of market entry. And there's some other information that you can see uh, on the actual clearance letter that they sent to Apple here, which you can find at the link on screen. And in that, they looked at what are the risks to health here with this device? One big one would be a poor quality ECG signal. Uh, so what the mitigation for that is from the regulatory standpoint is they want some additional clinical performance testing and some human factors testing and some labeling so people know that uh, this device should not take the place of something you would get from a medical professional or a approved FDA device. Uh, so that was one area that likely is still being worked on, which is why that feature is not yet available, even though the watch is. Um, there's some other factors here about people maybe misinterpreting or being over-reliant on the device output. Uh, there's also issues related to false negatives, uh, which might fail to identify that somebody has an arrhythmia or an AFib condition and prompt them not to get medical treatment when they should. And the FDA has been very clear about what this clearance entails and that uh, the watch app is going to be used for detecting AFib only uh, and showing sinus rhythm on a classifiable waveform. Uh, they are not clearing the device for other known arrhythmias at this time. Uh, and that's probably one of the risk areas because if you're feeling a little off, maybe you've got some chest pain or something and you run the ECG and it says you're fine, uh, you could maybe not get medical attention as a result of what the watch told you. That's one of the risk factors that Apple is going to have to mitigate through the human factors that they listed in their uh, list of mitigations. So I think what's going to happen is the watch is going to probably prompt you before running the test to know what it's for and what it isn't for and probably prompt the user if you're not feeling well, you still need to call the doctor. This is not a diagnosis. This is for informational use only, as it says here on screen. And they should not be uh, interpreting or taking any clinical action for this. It's also interesting, too, that they're recommending that people who are under 22 years of age not use it. And there have been some uh, pretty uh, remarkable reports in the media about how Apple Watches have helped some uh, high school athletes avoid a serious heart issue because it noticed a very rapid heart rate. It'll still detect that, but it looks like they're not recommending for whatever reason that people under 22 years of age rely on this as an informational product. So there's some limitations put in place here and Apple's going to have to figure out how to make all of that clear here on a very small screen. So this will be interesting to see what happens when they implement it. I'm still waiting for my Apple Watch, by the way, so when it gets here, maybe that feature will be ready by then and we'll take a deep dive into how it works and how they plan to address some of those risk factors. 
And then Raymond Dave Vrede here uh, wrote in about the fact that this is only one measuring point on the Apple ECG and that a typical ECG has 12 leads to get much more accurate ratings. And that is very much the case here. Again, this is why it is an informational product only. But again, I think the value of this is that uh, if you are feeling off and you have AFib as a condition or don't know that you have it, if the watch says, hey, you know, I think you might have atrial fibrillation, maybe it's time to go see a doctor. And if it gets people to do that, I think that is a far greater value and health benefit to patients than not having anything at all. And I think that's the same measurement that the FDA is putting up here to make sure that the benefits here outweigh the risks. And that's probably what they're working on with Apple right now. And as soon as this is ready, and as soon as I get my watch, we'll try it out and see how it works. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.